repair, rebuild, hell, build a new home. You have to ask your contractor these questions. Welcome back, Alex Beltran here. I talk real estate, let's get started. Anyway, contractors, general contractors, what a bunch of assholes, right? How is it that there's an entire ocean filled with these jerks and we have to find a good one in the bunch? It's like finding a needle in a needle stack. Not to brag, but once you ask these questions, you're gonna be able to weed out the majority of these quacks. Now, generally speaking, at least from my experience, there are three types of contractors. The one that does horrible work and or never finishes, but wants to be paid on time. The one that does a pretty good job, but way overcharges. And then there's the one with the really good reputation, does a very good job and charges fairly. Now, obviously we all want door number three. We'll settle for door number two, but we want to avoid at all cost door number one. Regardless, I, and I'm assuming you, you need to figure out how to categorize each particular contractor. Unfortunately, there is no foolproof method to answer that. If you're a real estate investor or use contractors constantly, you may have to hold a little bit of a trial by fire in order to weed out all the crappy ones. If you're just a homeowner that uses contractors every once in a while, you really have to do your research because cycling through so many contractors probably isn't going to be that feasible. When I first got started, I would get multiple estimates, try to hire local and do lots of due diligence, look into their license, their warranty, and their portfolio of work. And I highly recommend that you do the same. Now let's get to the questions. Number one, are you licensed? Number two, are you insured? Now these two can go together because they're basically the lowest bar that a contractor can basically leap over. And look, if you're anything like me, I know that technically speaking, your uncle Pancho can do all the work at a very cheap price, but Let's be real, he's a drunk and he never finishes what he started and chances are he's not licensed or insured. By being licensed and insured, you at least have some level of protection and some type of guarantee. Number three, how often do you communicate with your customers? Now you'd be surprised how many times I hear of contractors not getting to the job site for months and never updating the customer. Look, things happen and especially right now, a lot of things are on back order, but Letting the customer know goes a long way. Number four, how many projects are you working on right now? And look, at the end of the day, you're dealing with a business and a business needs money to, well, stay in business. Now, from my experience, if they're working on more than four projects, there's a very good chance that they're not gonna meet your deadline. And a good follow-up question to this is, how are you gonna manage these projects? Which actually leads us to question number five. Is this gonna be a subcontracted project? Now, there are some aspects that need to be subcontracted like electrical and plumbing. The last thing you want is for the plumbing to leak, cause a shortage in the electrical system, and cause a fire to the entire house. That would be a very bad thing. But there are some contractors that simply pick up the contract and hand it off to somebody else to do the actual work. Now, this isn't necessarily a disqualifier, but you really wanna make sure that the subcontracted team isn't third string of the Little League T-ball division, you know? Number six, who's gonna be at my property and for how long? Mainly for security purposes, because no one should ever be at your property unless expressly permitted. And two, you get the benefit of knowing how long this particular job is gonna take. Number seven, when do I pay you? This varies, some want half up front, others want you to at least pay for the material cost. This is kind of the negotiation stage, so use your discretion. And if they're asking you to pay in Amazon gift cards, run away. Number eight, will you agree to sign a lien release before I pay you? If the answer is no, then the immediate follow-up question should be, are you in the seafood business? Because there's something very fishy going on here and you better find out real quick what that is with a quickness. Number nine, any lawsuits. Now, this isn't necessarily a disqualifier because at the end of the day, we live in America where they hand out lawsuits more than they hand out student loan forgivenesses. What you're really looking for is how they handled it. Look, there are some jerks out there that don't pay the contractors and sometimes the contractor is forced to take legal action in order to collect or, you know, vice versa. And if it is vice versa, find out why. <laughs> Number 10, have you had to declare bankruptcy and or change your name? Now, if the answer is yes, 
this is kind of a disqualifier. Not necessarily, but you got to dig a lot deeper to find out if they're going to fall back into bankruptcy or why they had to change their name in the first place. Because if it was complete negligence, run. At the end of the day, even if all these questions are satisfactory, you got to go with the old gut feeling. You know what I'm talking about? You got to ask yourself, can you work with this person? And what type of character does this person have? And question of the day, do you have any contractor horror stories? Go ahead and comment them in the comment section down below. One, so that we can hear these cautionary tales and learn from them. And two, so that we can all laugh together at you. <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button or the dislike button. Who cares? It makes no difference. As long as there's activity, that's all YouTube really cares about. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to catch more. Um, other than that, I will catch you guys next week. Peace. Shh. <laughs>